<clears throat> did you get did you, did you get what you said? Like you can try to justify it. Try to justify what? Uniformity in nature. Well, I don't have to because I know that the there are laws of physics that are constants. There there are constants in uh, like the speed of light in a vacuum. Uh, and there yeah. are constants that like the fundamental uh, four fundamental forces of the universe that I know are constant. And those things yeah. can be relied upon. When, when you when you say that they're constants, right? Yeah. I'm still asking you. That's a claim which uh, let's for the moment I will just grant it to you. Okay, that they have been constant in the past. Okay, which you know I I wouldn't give you that, but let's just go for it for for the sake of the moment here, right? Okay, so let's say, how do you know that they will be constant tomorrow? Because how do you? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, because they basically have to for our universe to exist and function the way it has for almost mm -hmm. all of its uh, time of existing. Basically, they have to be that way. So, for our universe to go on functioning like it is now, they have to stay the same. Well, but there's no reason for you to believe that that will happen, right? The universe doesn't have to function that way. The universe doesn't have to exist, okay? The universe doesn't have to behave uh, as it did in the past, okay? From your worldview, we live in an ever-evolving universe. There's no plan for it. We might be here. We might not be here, okay? Right? A few millions of billions of years ago, the universe was totally different. And if you go far enough back, it didn't even exist. Okay? There's no providence there. It will be very difficult for you to know the certain things. Um, well, well, yeah, let's go with that. Okay, you, you, let's just stop there. So it's, I'm not, you know, overflowing you with the arguments here. But yeah, do you see what I'm saying here? Yeah, and I, I don't really think I disagree with you. Maybe I should clarify that. I guess I was saying more that <laughs> our universe and its current configuration that's able to support mm -hmm. life like human beings and and the life on earth and have gravity and have planets and stars the way we have now has to function the laws of physics have to function the way that they have in the past however the uh according to like cosmology the four uh forces of the universe like electromagnetic force strong and weak nuclear force those were yeah. combined into one unified force and so that they do change. They have changed in the past because they were unified and they split up. So yeah. I think the universe is very chaotic and is not um, basically, it doesn't, it's indifferent to saying... us living. So I, I agree with what you say that it, it could change, I think, but uh -huh. in, for the way that it's configured now, I think that the laws will be the same. Yeah. Well, well yeah, but for you, from your worldview, though, there's no good reason for because every time you, when I ask you to justify why, what's the reason for you to believe the uniformity in nature will be, we will have the same uniformity in nature tomorrow. The thing you did was you beg the question. Okay, I'll ask you to justify the uniformity in nature. What you did was pointing back to the past. So that's not you that no, that's that's what I'm asking you why do you believe that it will be applied tomorrow if you point back to the past that's not a justification well it's okay. it's something called uniformitarianism which just is is based it's just the idea that um, the, we can predict the the future based on what's happened in the past and mm -hmm. you know me, if, that's if, I, if I if I beg the question then maybe I didn't understand what you mean by uniformity of nature because yeah. Um, can you say that the thing again? We can make prediction. Well, now you you're pointing back to uniformity in nature, which I ask you to justify. Okay. Well, can you every define time that? you put? Yeah, for, from your worldview tomorrow, what is uh, for you? What reason do you have to believe that uniformity will be applied tomorrow? Uniformity, like how do you justify induction there? Like your worldview doesn't make any chance. We'll, we'll live in an ever-evolving universe. You well, that's, point that's back what I'm saying. I'm a little bit confused because you say the uniformity of nature, but I'm not sure what you mean by that because nature is, is very chaotic. I mean, there, are, there are certain laws, right? Okay. If you stub your toe tomorrow, 
uh, in like I don't know in something you you probably expect to you know to have pain okay if you don't eat tomorrow you will be hungry <laughs> uh you know and uh, many many other things okay if there's a sunny day it might be warm okay and so on and so on there's clearly regularity okay and i'm telling you that to explain this regularity or for you to have a justification a reason to believe that this will be applied tomorrow you, you don't have any good reasons to believe that from your worldview in my worldview God has told me, okay, it's providence, God has a plan for this, they have a plan for us, okay, there's other aspects to science which you cannot justify, like loss of logic, in your, are you a materialist, materialist? Um, I guess so, yeah, I'm a pragmatist. I, I, actually, I like you, dude, you're very honest, and I really like that, to be honest, you, you're very honest, and I really like that, um, loss of logic, for example. They're not material, right? Not made of matter. Yeah, no. Immaterial. Sure. Uh, they does not change. They're universal. Right? They, 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 you know, the when we went to the moon, um, we wouldn't believe, we didn't have any good reasons to believe that they will stop working. That it's okay to contradict itself on the moon, right? The universal, this exists everywhere. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> These laws are unchanging. They're immaterial, okay? Uh, and so on. They're immaterial, unchanging laws, which I believe only makes sense in your worldview. If the matter is only that exists. Why do you believe? Why? How? How do you justify immaterial, unchanging, universal laws? Well, these laws that uh, we're talking about, these are just uh, descriptive things. These are things that we are describing uh, about how things work based on mm -hmm. how they've worked in the past, because. If we use uh, our most powerful telescopes and we look at, at stars and galaxies that are billions of light years old, we can see literally back in time to see that the laws of physics and uh, I well, I don't know about the laws of logic, but we know the laws of physics mm -hmm. and the laws governing space time and the way that planets form and black holes. We know that those have always held the same. So we have no reason to believe that they will change. Mm. And when it comes I'm to laws sure of logic, that. that's more of philosophy, I think. Um, no, what, what you're what you're saying is that they are descriptive. Then, well, first yeah. of all, there's still something there. You're describing something that exists. Okay, a pattern, let's say. But okay, well, I think that's kind of absurd to take that position, because if that is the case, then tomorrow. Every argument you use today, let's say that, well, there's a logical contradiction in the Bible. Let's say that you're going to argue against the Bible. Tomorrow, it might be perfectly fine to have a contradiction in the Bible. And maybe at the time when this was written, maybe the universe behaved differently and it was okay to contradict itself. You know? Um, so, yeah, a valid argument today might be totally invalid tomorrow. Do you think that's a reasonable thing to take? You know? Well, I think that logical arguments and opinions and morals certainly do change. But like I said, we when it comes to the physical laws governing the nature of the universe and, and how matter interacts with uh, mm -hmm. other things in a physical setting, we can look back uh, in time, basically, and see that it didn't act differently back aren't then. You, aren't you presupposing, though, uh, that the laws of logic existed back then, you're using them as they are being descriptive. How would you, by looking at the universe we have today, know that they worked back then? Well, I was just talking about physical laws. Maybe you could remind me what the laws of logic are, because I, I think that's more yeah. philosophy. And uh, it's... you use you said that they are descriptive, and I, I think said, that's absurd. I said that the laws. Of, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And to give you an example, T Jump said the same, said the same thing. Okay, and, and there are very few philosophers who take that position that they are mere descriptive. We can get into that. And one of the arguments I already said, but it's quite funny. 
he said that the laws of logic are made descriptive. You know who Chi Jump is, right? Yeah. And then, uh, just a few minutes after then, they were talking about what is the first cause. And remember now that in his worldview, in his materialistic worldview, he cannot justify immaterial, unchanging laws. So you have to say that they are descriptive. Two minutes after he said that, do you know what he went on to do? No. He was talking no. about the multiverse, which was before the universe. But in his worldview, if the laws of logic are not prescriptive, why does he believe that he can use the laws of logic on, let's say, a multiverse? Because, it, you know, according to him, the laws of logic doesn't transcend the universe we have today. He's just describing how the local universe works right now. You know, maybe, I mean, the universe in many areas work differently on other parts of the universe. Maybe laws of logic doesn't exist there, right? Let's say that it's okay to contradict it, uh, it's uh, oneself let's say, on another uh, you know, part of the universe. But the point here is that he used the loss, you use the loss of logic, I use the loss of logic, we build bridges with the loss of logic, okay? We use them as prescriptive, as actually laws, okay? We use them when we're talking about, let, let's say, the first cause. We use them, uh, we, will, we will never expect them to, to change tomorrow. We build bridges with them, you know, they are very useful. We use them as prescriptive, you know, and I don't, you know, people have to take like such a radical idea of the loss of logic. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's very absurd, you know, yeah. if, if you see what I'm saying. Well, you know, I, I don't think I can be expected to defend T-Jump's argument if I don't know exactly what he said. But um, I, I don't I would be surprised if he said that he outright believes or says that he knows that the, the multiverse is a thing. I, I imagine that he was uh, using that's the multiverse as saying. an argument. Well, I mean, no, that's not what I'm saying. You, I'm you saying that that he no, no, that's not what I'm saying existed before the Big Bang. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He gave that an example. He tried to reason. What, remember was now. Was it a hypothetical what, example, or does he say that that hypothetical what example? Yeah. And I actually reason, you know, about the first cause and c certain other things. And the point here is that in one sentence he said that they are mere description how the physical universe works right now. How? Why would he expect them to? Let's say. Why does he even reason about the first cause, for example? But there's no reason for him to believe that there were actually laws of logic back then. Well, these are these are laws that are based on ontology and based on the philosophy of humans discussing logical that? arguments. These aren't something like uh, gravity or or the laws of physics. These are very human centric. <laughs> so talking I, I about meant. these, talking about these about did the laws of logic exist way before humans <laughs> existed? I I would say that i mean in in uh not really i mean because these are human constructs these are uh human okay. i mean these are human uh, con uh social constructs that they and... they've made to argue and debate logically but they're well, different than laws of physics that is very interesting and i actually agree with you there okay because the gravity right now, let's say you can jump higher on the moon, right? Uh, we would never expect us to be able to, we wouldn't expect to have different laws of logic on the moon. So I agree with you, they're not like any other, let's say, laws. They're immaterial laws of thought, okay? Yeah. Uh, also, uh, so, so I agree with you there, but you was the one who said that they are descriptive, okay? I would say that they are descriptive, but also prescriptive. Okay, and also you said something else there. Um, uh, well, I mean, they're they're I guess they're descriptive in the way that they're just describing the way that human beings tend to use logic. Like can we apply have to them. we have cause and effect. Uh, you know, That's we, not lots of logic. Um, well, um, there's. I, you know, I, these in my world, we this reflect how the God, how God works and how he thinks. Okay, the laws of logic are immaterial, like God, right? 
They are unchanging like God, universal like God, right? It reflects how, how he thinks. We see his fingerprints, you know? It, it, we see his fingerprints in the universe. Now, you use the laws of logic as they are actually laws and prescriptive. You expect me to be reasonable and be logical. Every single worldview, I think the laws of logic are necessary for you to have a coherent worldview, okay? So let's say, would you think uh, a worldview where you can contradict yourself is that logical? Do you think that's reasonable? I of course I think, not. No, I think it's reasonable because there are people who exist who uh, are self-contradictory. There are people who are uh, mentally unstable who say things that contradict reality. Yeah. There are children who are very stupid who say things that uh, contradict the truth or contradict themselves. And there are people who lie, who say mm -hmm. things that are contradictory to the truth and to what they know is true. So. <laughs> no, sure I don't, I don't disagree that. with that. No, I don't disagree with what you just said. But in a world, of course, people are illogical, but we use the, we use these laws to correct how we should think, how we ought to think. Okay. Uh, sometimes I, you know the classical the classical argument you know do you believe in truth right you believe in absolute truth right many people say no well that is a true statement so you I, just would say no. I would say no well then you just refuted yourself why because when you say that you don't believe in absolute truth that itself is a true statement you just said something that you believe is true. Is, is that is that an absolute true statement, or is that just right. a true statement? Right, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. I mean, there's no difference between absolute truth. And no, you're conflating. You no. keep conflating absolute certainty with probabilistic truth assessments. He's been talking no. about probabilistic truth this whole time, and you've been assuming absolute no, certainty. No, which no, is that's why you keep I'm invoking saying. the uniformity no, of nature. No, I mean, there's yes. no difference between. Okay, so so there's no difference between absolute truth and truth. That's not how the English language works. That's not. That's how incorrect. Works. Yeah. That's not how adjectives work. You can't say how can how can I, how can absolute truth how can truth not be absolute? Well, let me let me explain. So yeah. uh, I I think that um, the reason I would say I don't believe in absolute truth is because I'm a human being. I can see things based on the visible light, which is a tiny sliver of the spectrum of all the radio uh, radioactive energy in the universe i can't see radio waves i can't see x-rays or gamma rays there's a whole uh spectrum of things that i can't see uh, there are dogs and and other animals that have senses of smell that are far better than mine uh, and yeah. it goes on and on so my perception of reality is very limited there's a whole lot of stimuli i'm not getting so I can't say that I can know, uh, I can know things that are true, but I can't know uh, the universe or my own reality with an absolute truth because that would be like an overhead omnipotent God, God's view of reality would be absolute because he created it. If, you know, so in, in a religion, say, religion, but I don't have no, but an absolute I, truth. No, but I asked you and you said no. Right. So you're not so you're not sure about that. No, I said I said I don't think that absolute truth is something that humans can know or comprehend. I can have truth, and that's good enough for me. But I wouldn't say. Nor that do we absolute. need it. Yeah, and I think no, what's but, important is that we do not need absolute truth. There is a lot of good that can come about, a lot of pragmatic use that comes out of close enough. Yeah, right. but that statement, when he said no, that he don't believe in absolute truth, that is an absolute truth statement. That's the thing. Either Something is either true or it, not true. It is right? not. It is not. Okay. I, don't, I don't know why you're not getting about, this. What about the loss, okay, lo the lo loss of, the loss of ex excluded middle? Either something is true or it's not true, okay? So your true statement, is it true or not true? What? Uh, what truth statement? That there's no absolute truth. I think that it's true, but that's again, my that flawed perception, statement. and that's my opinion. Well, then you don't believe it. Then you don't know. That's basically what you say. Sure. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's what we've been that's, saying. That, no, 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 no. That's no. what he's been. No, that's where that's where he's screwing it up. He keeps saying, be, "Therefore, you don't know." He's assuming that no means you have to be absolutely certain. He's assuming absolute certainty, no. which is what I said a minute ago. Yeah. No, no, no but you don't get it, dude. You don't get it. Um, listen. Wait, to you me. just said he right, didn't know. If I'm ninety nine point nine percent certain, you're saying I don't yeah. know. Okay. No, yeah, he, that's stupid. No, he said no. You don't get it, dude. I'm not sure, like. Like the, the, it seems like the other don't uh, get it, but you don't get it, okay? If he makes a true statement that absolute truth doesn't exist, that itself is a true statement. Um, I yep. didn't make a statement. You, you, a you asked me. Not... You asked me. Yeah, and you you gave me a, an answer that you don't. There are no uh, absolute truth. No. What if my answer no. is I don't think it exists? What if my answer is it I don't think it exists? Either. Is that an absolute true statement? Uh, that's not what it said, though. And how can you? That doesn't make it. Can I say that? Can I say I don't think it exists? Is that a possible answer to that? Think, but that's not what it said. Well, you can say. No, that I'm answering I don't your know. question. Ask me the question. You're asking me the question. Can abs does? Do you think no, absolute truth exists? Listen, listen, I don't dude, think I'm it exists. Listen, this no, refutes you your listen, point, you which is why you're fighting back. This you refutes your entire it. point. No, it doesn't, dude. Listen, that wasn't even a point. My point here, when I asked him that question, is that, for example, many people say no. That is a contradiction. And he, we were talking about this specifically, right? We said he said like, yeah, I do believe people are illogical. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I agree with him. That if he says I don't it. think, if he says I don't think absolute truths exist, is that a contradiction? Well, he said no, that they don't exist. That's a, that's a statement. That's a truth statement. Is he allowed you to assumed, revise his position? You, denying. you, you assumed absolute right. certainty when he said, I don't think it can exist. No, he didn't say, I don't think it's it. He said, no. Atheist like, Junior, not, would you yeah, like, like to revise your position? You're like stupid or like... Yeah, uh, you, I, you asked me, uh, I guess, yeah. I forget what the actual question was, but you asked me about, uh, you, you said uh, that you've asked people if they think absolute truth exists and they say no. And I, I said, I would also say no. Uh, and yeah. then I think I went on to uh, explain why I hold that position. If you want to uh, put on me that I don't know, I'm perfectly okay with that. I don't know why Christians and religious people think that saying I don't know is such a bad thing. It's perfectly okay to say that you don't okay, know. Okay, even that, even something. that, even that. I don't know. Is that a statement? It. Is it, yeah. either true or false? Is, is it either true or false? <clears throat> it's true that I don't know okay, something. That's a, that's a true statement. But see, you're, like, I, I know not, where you're going, and you're conflating absolute truth and truth, and there's no, no reason no, to you do that. that. That itself, I don't know, it's a truth statement that you don't know. So you refuted you again. Like, this is not difficult, guys. Come on. Why, why, am, I refuting, why am I refuted, though? See, the, the issue here is that uh, 676 is dealing in absolutes. And as yeah. we all know, only Siths deal in absolutes. <laughs> and I don't know why we're listening well, to this. Only Sith. what? Well, only what? Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Yeah. Like, you you don't really see. You, you Like, this is not difficult, okay? If you make a true statement that I don't know, that is either true or false, okay? That means that you actually believe in truth, right? This is like this is not difficult. You guys are philosophers. You guys are YouTubers. You guys hold should understand. On, hold it. on a second. Hold on a second. And you have a YouTube channel? The question I do. The question was about if I believe in absolute truth. Don't smuggle in this. Okay, thing. what is okay? What is the difference between truth and absolute truth? Okay, like either I said, a, either either it's a true or false. Okay, right. right. Right, but there yeah. are things in science that we held to be true, like the idea that there was the universe was uh, in a steady state, that it was fixed, and then later on we we learned that the universe was actually expanding. Well, back then it was true that this the universe was no, in a it fixed wasn't state, true, dude. No, it based, wasn't true. Based on our our limited human perception. No, no, no. Truth just because versus it's absolute truth something. that would be. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, dude. Just because you believe something is true doesn't make it true. People, Ptolemaic astronomy. I know. Astronomy, I know. I agree. It true because people believed in it. No, yeah. it wasn't. Exactly. That's exactly, yeah, so exactly what I said. The truth is arbitrary. It is. No, it's not. Yeah. Like that's a true statement, dude. That's a true statement. You, 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 you just, you, just, you refuted yourself again, dude. That is a true statement. 
See, I don't have, have a lot you, of experience have you in asked philosophy. Him what he means by truth? Have you asked him what his theory oh, yeah, of yeah, matter is? Dude, you are, dude, just, oh, <laughs> no, he, he has. He avoids the question. He yeah. conflates every comp understanding no, of yeah. truth. You, you, well, you said you said that truth is first of all. You just refused. Did you see what you just said? You said it is arbitrary, right? Right? Is that a true statement? I'm. It is. I'm. I'm using no, truth as in. A limited perception and then absolute truth as an omnipotent bird's eye view that God would have of what is the actual reality. Oh. So I have been very clear about the way I'm using the word truth. You have not. You've been conflating absolute truth and the word truth. And every time I say absolute something, truth. you think it's a gotcha to say, oh, that's a truth statement. No, but no, no, you're no, conflating no. it with absolute truth. Point. Listen, that's what's not, uh, not even my point, okay? Uh, to gotcha, okay. You you have been very nice and you have been very honest, and I respect that, okay. So I didn't try to get a gotcha of you, okay. My point here was that you said that well, there are people. I asked you, do you think it's logical for it? Well, do you think it's reasonable for someone who has contradiction in their worldview, like they, they accept? Yeah, there can be contradiction in my worldview. That's what I asked you, right? And then I, I showed you, and then you went on and saying like, well, I mean, there are people who are all I illogical. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And then I asked, for an example, when people ask, do you believe in truth? No. Uh, that's a truth statement. You know, that's, that's, that was on. my point. Just to show. You, know, that, you know, that's not what you said. You know, you, you said, do you believe, you said that pe uh, you, uh, people... Or you ask people if they believe in absolute truth, and they yeah. say no. Yeah. And I concur that I also would say no. But again, you're doing it again. You're conflating these no, two things. No, no, no. Listen, you still no. I've, I, have I have witnesses. I have witnesses. Either something is true or it's not. Just because you add an absolute truth is just for the meme, dude. Okay. No, no. So hold like on, hold on. Let, let me what? let me try this. Let me try this. Yeah. Mike, you're back. You're backpedaling. <laughs> Mike, oh, I, I'm 23 years old. Mike, okay. how old am I? You're 23, you told me. I am not 23 years old. It, is, it has not been exactly 23 oh, years that? since I was born. Okay. But I am 23 years old. So how yeah, so old you, am I? Am I objectively, well, absolutely 23 years old? Is it absolute old, truth old, that I'm 23 old. years old? Or well, are we close enough? Okay, let me, let me tell you. It's an absolute truth that you're older than 23. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, no. Oh, All go, of the you... stuff that makes me up has existed for more than thirty years, for billions of years. So, no, that wait, is not wait, even absolute wait, truth. Wait, 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 wait. You asked you. You asked me. you asked yeah about you. Okay. Yes. So you I asked... told you that I was I was twenty three years old. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, yeah, and like that yeah, is conceptually. Uh, what we understand to be 23 years old. I, I okay. my 24th birthday has not yet occurred. Okay. So it's my 23rd has. That you're older than 23. See, there you go. This, this is not difficult, dude. I, but the stuff that makes me up, who I am, what I am, uh, listen, who I am, not, but what I am. Listen, you wasn't talking, listen, listen, you weren't talking about what exists before you, like the matter and so on, dude. Come on. Like, this is, this is silly. This is like, I admit I'm not a philosopher, but the truth no, of whether or not I am 23 years old, yeah, or I am Is over 23 years old. Hmm? Mm -hmm. that, never like, mind. Go ahead. I, yeah. I, I, that I, I am. You believe in an afterlife, then? I think we can leave out the uh, how old the atoms were because I like your original argument. And I think it's good. I think it's fine on its own. Just the idea yeah. of uh, being 23, but really it's like 23 and like. 42 days or whatever 18 minutes that would be the absolute truth you go down to the second or the femtosecond or whatever but in based on how human beings do things for our own convenience and colloquially we would just call the person 23 we're not going to call them 23 and 42 days old yeah we, we don't care about that you, exactly older than 23 there you go i am older yes. than 23 <laughs> Yes. Is it true that are you older than twenty three? I am older than twenty three years old. Is that a true statement? But uh, yeah, sure. Do you, do you go? Like yeah. I, I don't reject that there is a reality. 
And I say absolute truth is that which comports with that reality. So it is the the reality external to me that, yes, more than 23 years ago, I was born. But less than 24 years ago, I was born. Yeah, both of them are true statements. So, yeah. Yes, there, true. I, yeah, I believe in an objective reality outside of my perception. Yeah, yeah you, I, you I'm not Atheist you, Junior. We're different people. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So yeah, you believe it. So what's your argument? The, the, it is technically both truth and not truth to say I am 23 years old. Okay. I am not, I am 23 years how, old. How is, how I am is also 23? not 23 years old. So you're 23 years old and not 23 years old. Was I born that's 23 not a, that's years not a ago? genuine contradiction, though. That's just that's just yeah. like an equivocation. It's an the example. Term, right? that's, that's, yes, that's yes. Another... It's exa- No, it is an example of the equivocation no, I, that he has been using this entire time. No, no, it's not, dude. No, it's not. And I see what you're saying. You're trying to say that. Well, I'm 23 years old, but I'm also older than 23, right? That's what, what that's what you're saying. You're trying to say like, well, it's not an absolute truth statement, but it is, dude. Either you're 20, exactly 23 years old or you're not. Okay, okay you're but you understand like, that means that I cannot say I am 23 years you can't old. You can generalize because... or whatever it's called, right? But, so we can make so... general statements now that aren't exact. No one, no one is. No, listen. Oh man, like okay, this is like oh, this is like. Can you, I, don't Mike, it. can I just give a? Can I give you a quick try here, just because? Yeah. Let's say if by true, I don't know if they said something like correspondence. I don't know what they said, but like let's yeah. just say that by true, what I mean is. Um, as like Richard Rorty said, truth is the compliment we, we pay to the most well-justified beliefs that we have, and it plays a cautionary role that there might be additional information that comes in later. So, so it's not the final word. So, if I say when I say that's true, what I'm expressing is this is the most well-justified belief that satisfies the most aims of the inquiry yeah. at, at at play. Yeah, and and then you go, okay, well, is that the absolute truth? And I go, oh, okay, cool. You just switched from the complementary use to the cautionary use, where you're going. It could don't don't be thinking that there couldn't be additional information that changes what you're now saying is incredibly well justified. No, and that's, that's all they that's, mean by truth. Yeah, no, that's that's not what's what wrong with that. Say, no, because it's either something is true or not true. Okay, it's because you add well, something. No, out. Yeah, I, I just I told what you what saying. I mean by true. Either there's something well you're correct yeah. either something is the most well justified belief that we have that satisfies yeah. the aims of the inquiry or it isn't that's it doesn't statement. that's not actually a yeah. response to the it's, to that yeah, understanding well, actually, even even for you to say that it's a true statement is there any way okay. that we can like move yeah, on great. from if, argument if what you mean by it's, it's if what you mean true, by that is true. what i just said it's, is the most yeah, well justified belief that we have is that uh, true yeah is that true that's a true statement yeah and then i had have to then if you ask me that or you don't know well, I just told you what you're using when you do when you use the words absolute truth. You're switching yeah. from the complementary use to the cautionary use. Yeah, and you're trying to deny the absolute truth. So in the truth cautionary sense, up, I would say no, because additional that. information is could that, come uh, in. Is that true? Is that true? I, I, I have a question. I have a you, realize, you realize that you're like being a <laughs> pest who's not engaging with what I'm saying oh, about but, truth, right? <laughs> yes. Well, you're making true statement up on true statement. Uh, what, but I told you what I mean you. by truth. I told you what the word truth is meaning yeah. when I'm using it that way. And you're just going, nah, -uh, I'm just going to keep using it my way. Yeah. I, can I no, ask no, you a question no, now? Because, but even by your, uh, wait. Even by your no, he's he's standard. retreating now. This is this is over. No, he's just no, done. He's, no, no, no. I get it, Mike. You're asking me. Am I giving you the truth about truth? That's what you're asking. Yeah, me. I mean, you, you truth said, uh, I understand well, this, what you're asking. The me. truth in our worldview is the is the thing that you know our most just, justified belief. That itself is a true statement, right? Well, no, that's an incredibly well justified statement. So yes, it is true. Uh, uh, is that true? Is that true? Yes, it's well. Yeah, you refuse oh, yourself again, dude. You see what you're doing. You think you're. Are you, do you think you're doing an internal critique, or are you just bringing in baggage from your worldview <laughs> yeah, kind of, and, no, and imposing no, it on us? Doing an internal critique. Yeah. So if I say that that's what truth means, just asking me if it's true, and I say yes, and you go, aha, see, you do believe in absolute truth. And I'm going, because, well, I just told you what yeah, I mean by truth. Because either something is true or not. It doesn't matter if you add the absolute truth. Nothing about what I just said gets away from the notion that it's either true or not. It's just, what do you mean by true? And I just gave you what I mean, and you're just going, nah. -uh. <laughs> Yeah, and by doing that, you, you're showing it, you're, you're refusing your standards by saying that it's actually that's not true. How? It, it is. You have not that demonstrated is. that. All you've done is repeatedly ask me, is that true? 
Yeah, uh, while, yeah, and I asked, why did I ask you that? Because you just made a true statement. Because you're equivocating on the use of the term truth no, and not granting no. me my meaning or criti or criticizing it. You're just asking yeah. me, is this the tr is it true? That's all you're asking. It's is not it, a criticism. Uh, this is it, this like you know this is, is it is it true that amazing. Noah's is it true that Noah's flood happened? Or of course, yeah, it's true. It it is. It is. Yeah, of course. How do you know that? That was, that was silly of you to. Because that approach to truth you just took with me was that was you should think about that. Buddy, after everything you just movie. after everything you just you, said, you know that you, ref, you just you know that you refuted yourself there. You know you just keep oh, saying yeah. that and then you keep asking, yeah, "Is it true?" You, you, You're not you, actually giving an argument or saying what I said is wrong. I, well, how do you, you how you do you know that? While you try to deny it, yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. How do you know that that's true though? How do you know it's true that it happened? Because God, God has the ability to me. Because God has the ability to flood the earth. Get, of course, of course, yes, yeah, of course. Um, okay, but that doesn't mean it happened. Genesis. Oh, now, but he revealed that he did. Noah, who, who, so, who is Noah? They got to the flood, right? He was a, he ha, was in a boat during the flood in the in the story. Yeah, he survived. He survived the flood, therefore the flood exists. It, it happened. It no, happened. Noah survived the flood, therefore the flood happened. Yeah. That after everything that you just said about uh atheists not having like a, a worldview that makes sense or that can understand truth and, and you come at me with that That's bullshit. Not what I said. That's not what I said. You don't have to just we were talking about the justification for uh for science. And you couldn't, uh, okay. you couldn't justify it. Well, you 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 can't. You're justifying your uh, biblical beliefs by saying the Bible says it, therefore it's true. How do you know this thing in the Bible uh, yeah, is true well, because it's in the Bible? Well, that's circular. Exactly. Yeah, because the God has revealed it. Yeah, everyone have a circular reasoning. No, no, you do. Okay, so what what did you just said? <clears throat> like, that... what did we talk about two minutes ago? We, we were talking about how you were conflating truth and absolute truth and how going you know in that? circles. Because... Do you have to rely on your memory to to claim that? No, because I'm re I've been recording this call on OBS. How do you know that? Do you remember that? I have the file on my computer. I mean, it's still recording, but I will have the file. Yeah. And I, I so have other you have files. to rely on you have to rely on your memory. I rely no, on no, the no the the I rely on my computer's memory because the data is stored on my computer. How do you, how do you know that you have a computer? Because I built it and it's sitting I, in front of me. Do, do Ray, how did that? this go from how did this go from a discussion about the flood to you asking skeptical scenarios? Yeah. Oh, because how did you how did you judo have, move that? Oh, it's good. No, the, wait, what do you mean it's good? <laughs> what are you guys implying here? Like he asked you whether the flood happened. You said yes. He said, how do you know yeah. that? You said because God revealed it. And then you somehow managed to turn that line of questioning into you asking him skeptical scenarios about his memory. <laughs> yeah, because he said I have no secret reasoning, and yeah, he has. Yeah, but so, you yeah, do. You it's not circular for I, me I to do say have, and that. I even admit that. I even admit that, that I have. Yeah, of course, everyone has. No, because they're arguing about like no, proper every, basicality without naming every, it. Everyone does not use circular reasoning. You are. In this case okay. of of proving using the Bible to prove a claim from the Bible, it's classic uh, Christian. Uh, yeah, it's, it's my standard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I I'm. I don't even then, hide then that. Yeah. Why, then why? Then why are you so concerned yeah. about uh, my truth statements? As if I've done something wrong when your your logic is totally fallacious. Well, that's not and, actually and what I said. I said. Up. Yeah. No, we were talking about justifying uh, the loss of logic, right? And. And then we went in. Then I said that uh, worldviews without the loss of logic are not really coherent. And yeah, yeah I mean, I, I still I, agree with that. Mike, do you have a do you, do you draw a distinction between virtuous and vicious circularity? <laughs> there are definitely so. Yeah, I'm, how do you, I'm reading, how do you I'm reading part of explain. Van Til right now, and I know he okay. used that kind of language. I'm not really sure exactly, but yeah. Because uh, like I know I know that like Ernest Sosa, who's like a big a, a, a epistemologist, he has like mm -hmm. versions of circularity where there's like six versions of it. There's two virtuous, two vicious, and two benign. 
and I don't know his account. I just I always hear people bring up um, everyone's got worldview circularity, and then but nobody ever seems to be able to explain how they cash out the difference between virtuous and vicious. They just go, "Mine's virtuous, and yours is vicious." Too yeah, fast, think- too fast, too circular. Wait, who? Wait, who? Who? Who did you mention? Is he like a presuppositionalist? Er, er- Ernest Sosa is not a presuppositionalist. He works on like virtue epistem virtue epistemology, and uh, he's just a general philosopher, yeah. primarily focusing on epistemology. You can Google Ernest Sosa circularity. There's papers addressing his uh, his account of circularity, and apparently there's vicious and virtuous and benign. And I don't know yeah. what they are. I just I, I just hear people say everyone's worldview is circular and then you go and they, and there's a tacit, well, some of the circles are good and some of the circles are bad, but I can't really explain why mine is the good one and yours is the bad one. Well, I mean, I know that Van Til went through this, uh, this kind of things and even Gordon Clark, give me a moment. Someone is calling. It, it's, yeah. it's just, it's really just special pleading, you know? Uh, well, no, no, they're really, this is a real thing in philosophy. No, there I, are, know. I know. There is this notion that at the, at the ultimacy level, you're going to have to, any explanation you give is going to have to include the explanation. Like if you're saying you're explaining it all. And That's so it's so going to get circular. But the question is, That's how do we. But we were just we talking about one claim from the Bible, though, not all yeah. of existence. You, you've got it all wrong, guys. The Munchausen trilemma, for example, is not giving free circular options. It's talking about circularity, infinite regress, and the dogma. <laughs> You could also start your reasoning or your beliefs with a dogma. It's not circular. It just starts with a dogma. God exists. Or is that circular? Yeah. But we, we weren't talking about the, that. The, the, we, were, we were just saying, yeah, did the flood of Noah happen? That was my question. Not about all of existence or God existing. That's just one claim. And he, he said, I, well, the, it said it happened in the Bible. Systemic uncertainty, I see. Yeah. He said that it, God revealed it in the Bible. It was written in the Bible. So this claim, I asked, did this story that's written in the Bible, did that actually happen? And he said, yes. And my evidence is the fact that it's in the Bible, which he uh, believes is a very important and sacred book that was divinely inspired when it was written. That's cir- that's circular. And well, that's a dogma. No, no, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's it's a dogma. dogma. It's both. Yes, yeah, but... <laughs> circularity and using a dogma is not the same thing it's not two different things i didn't say it's One the same thing it. i didn't say it's the same thing well i but said it's I, a dogma and then you said yeah it's circular <laughs> i said that it's a, it's a dogma and it's also circular and fallacious That's and possible i don't see <laughs> why do you know you know uh, yeah because in dogma trilemma, is just... atheist junior do you know what he meant when he said munchausen's trilemma no, a dogma I... is not based on anything, man. It's not even justified. It's just a dogma, right? It's just true. There is no reason, no good reason for that's that. Because the good reason not what dogma, dogma means. That's not what dogma means. Well, no, sorry, sorry. Hey, what do you mean? Yeah, well, he's using it in a way that makes sense if you knew the trilemma. The trilemma I, goes like this: I, any well, given, any given I, belief okay. is either going to be justified circularly, or it's going to have a arbitrary stopping point, a dogmatic stopping point, or it's going to go on for an infinite regress. So it's either going to be circular, it's going to bottom out in some bare uh, dogmatic assertion, or it's going to be an infinite regress. So that's yeah, how any is true for all world. Well, that's true for all worldviews. Also for your worldview, Atheist Jr. Okay, well, forgive me that I, I may have uh, misinterpreted what you were saying there, but um, I don't, don't think... The reason that I think it's a problem that this is circular is that... I, I'm not talking about, um, you know, explaining the origin of the universe or the origin of God where you can get into infinite regress. I was only asking about whether or not the flood of Noah happened. And you don't have to go to, well, it was in the Bible and the Bible is divinely inspired. So that makes it true because if it did happen, there should, be tons, of ge- there should be tons of geological evidence. Boring. Uh, uh, wh- why don't you go? Shut up. Who's the one saying that? Is that Fixie? Yeah, that's me. All right, I'm going to serve you. No, 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 no. You stopped. Oh, well, okay. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) No, 80s Junior, is your worldview based on a dogma, infinite regress, or on a circular, or on circular reasoning? What is it based on? 
it's uh none of those things no that's not true that's not true man it cannot be true i'm confused because uh the way that you're using the word dogma i mean the dogma is just uh like true it means set, just, take of, him to say take him to just say brute fact then it's, it's a set of going to bottom out at some point where you go it just is that way yeah it's just it is this way and it cannot change also you're saying i have no further reasons it just is that way yeah and i i understand that within christianity it's dogma that the flood happened but i'm but i asked about you view man okay so you're 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 f- focusing on the religious connotations of the word dogma. Just, just forget it it has nothing to do with a dogma can be for example that uh uh trump is always good right whatever trump does is good that's yeah. my dogma. Well, let's say i said I... let's say i said newtonian physics is correct you said why and i said it just is yeah you'd say oh well, you're being dogmatic you're, you're dogmatically yeah. asserting some stopping point for reasoning that you have no further justification for yeah. but you don't even need one if it's a dogma i just i just disliked that sort of usage of it but you were you're right yeah yeah i mean that's a trilemma that's why it's called a trilemma there is no way to escape this i think but i'm not sure well, the, typically the response is that it is one of those options, but then you have to explain why it's not a problem. Like you say, yeah, it's an infinite regress, but here's why infinitism isn't a defeater for knowledge. Or yeah, I have a stopping point, but I have a pragmatic account of knowledge. So starting somewhere onboarding a certain uh, starting point for inquiry is not a problem for my view of knowledge. So you, typically the response is to pick one and then say why it's not as bad as the person says it is. Yes. Yeah, but but then you could cannot point your finger at someone and tell them that their reasoning is circular because your reasoning is also circular. Well, no, unless right? you're saying I have a dogmatic, unless you're saying I, I have a dog, an, yes. I'm an infinitist and I have reasons why circularity and foundationalism are wrong. Mm. You could yeah. um, like that's an option on the table. You could say you could say I have a pragmatic account of knowledge that shows why circularity and infinite regresses are not acceptable. Is there anybody in here that would object to, to me posting this call on my YouTube channel? Because uh, I've been recording for about 45 minutes. It's been an no, interesting cool discussion. I don't okay. have just wanted, just wanted to check. 